I'm not gonna lie, this could go horribly wrong. Hi everyone and welcome back to another cook on the channel and uh, today we're doing something a little bit different because I am not entirely sure that this cook is going to work out so let me do a little bit of a story time to explain so back in the Q&A episode um, I think it was Phil asked a question Phil from Love to Barbecue has left a message what is your biggest cooking success and biggest cooking feel cooking feels uh, beef takes 100%. The day I bought my WSM, I went to the butchers and ordered some beef cheeks and I thought, right, I've seen them before, the little like, nuggets of brisket that you can just mash into shredded beef. So put them onto the smoker, um, followed a rough recipe, I watched a few videos to see what to do with them, brought them off after the cook and they were like bullets. So, um, Beef cheeks have still been my nemesis for a while. Uh, I'm not sure I've had any major disasters apart from that. No, we'll stick with beef cheeks. That's the one I need to nail first. By the way, Phil, I saw your beef cheeks cook. You've nailed it, so I'll be bugging you to find out how you done that. So as I explained in the answer to that question, beef cheeks have always been my nemesis. I tried them once. The first day I bought my smoker, they were terrible and I've never touched them since. Since then, Phil has actually put an article out on his website about how he mastered beef cheeks so I thought today it might be interesting to get a couple finally face my fears and try it again and we are going to follow Phil's method on his website. So Phil's website is lovetobarbecue.co.uk and the article is called if at first you don't succeed so I'll leave a link for that down in the description uh, or you can head on over to that URL you'll find it easy enough. So in this Phil goes through his attempts at beef cheeks and how they were failures. Failure is quite a harsh word. They didn't quite work out. Um, and then on his fourth attempt, uh, he changed up a few things each time and in his fourth attempt, he got them right. So we're gonna follow that method. We want to get them right today. But attempt one, cook without any wrapping or braising, taking the meat to 203 Fahrenheit internal. Result, fail. Uh, cook two, cook and wrap after a couple of hours with no braise, taking them to 203 Fahrenheit, result fail. Attempt three, cook and wrap after a couple of hours with a braise, taking the meat to 203 Fahrenheit, result fail. Attempt four, cook and wrap after a couple of hours with a braise, taking the meat beyond 203 Fahrenheit until they look and felt ready. Result success. So that's the one we're going for today. Uh, it's happened to me quite a few times before where cooking to a temperature sometimes isn't uh, quite right. You cook to a feel. So we always say you start checking temperatures maybe around a certain range, but once they get there, if they're not probing right or they don't feel ready, uh, leave them be for a while just because the temperature in the recipe maybe says to take them off at 203 doesn't necessarily mean they'll be ready at 203. So as far as smoker setup, Phil smoked these at 235 Fahrenheit on a Smoky Mountain, so we'll go ahead and get my Smoky Mountain set up for the same. So for smoker setup today, we're using the 47 centimeter Smoky Mountain. Um, I have filled the charcoal ring at the bottom with around a full chimney of unlit briquettes. These are the Weber briquettes. Uh, I'm gonna try out a different tip I'd seen on the Baby Back Maniac channel with a video he had done with Harry Sue. Uh, he actually placed his smoker chunks in the bottom of the centre bit and then tipped his lit charcoal on top of it. So apparently that's better for getting a, a better smoke than actually just setting them on top where they can catch fire a bit too easily. So uh, we'll try this out and see if it makes a difference. So I have some lumpwood charcoal lighting up at the minute. I said it lights a little bit faster so I'll dump it in and then get everything built up, fill up the water bowl and let it come up to temperature. While 
the smokers coming up the temperature we'll go ahead and take a look at the beef cheeks themselves so I have two of them here uh, they're monsters of beef cheeks um, this one has still a bit of a fat cap left on it this one not so much it's just the old sort of silver skin on the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead and trim these up a bit uh, I'm gonna remove all this fat cap as you can maybe see they are highly marbled with fat so there's no real need to have a fat cap on them so I'm gonna take that off and uh, that'll give us some more uh, contact with the meat then to get the rub onto it. Uh, today we're going to use the Black Ops from Oak Ridge Barbecue, so I have some of that ready. So we'll go ahead, trim these up, and uh, get them into a little bit better shape, and then we'll get them in the rub and get them onto the smoker. This is what we're left with after they've all been trimmed up. Uh, this was the one with the bigger fat cap on it and this is the one just with the silver skin on it. So I've gone ahead and removed that. This is actually the side, this is fat cap side and silver skin side. Um, underneath, I've tidied them up a bit. You can probably see better on this one that there is a large vein uh, of sort of fat membrane that runs through these. Um, you can see it starting here and it runs down the side and you can sort of see it continuing along here into this bit. Uh, ideally that wouldn't be in there, that's going to be quite tough once it cooks down, however to remove that you would need to make a real mess of these so I think it's best just to leave it in and we'll be aware of it then once we come to sort of shred, well hopefully come to shred these apart. Um, and I'd say that can be sort of removed afterwards, it's not really going to cook down so it'll still be in one solid piece but uh, you can really see once you remove that fat cap membrane the fat marbling that's in these um, are all the sort of connective tissues so that's why they need such a long time and such a, a breeze to really break down so so both of these were around 650 grams before I started trimming them down um, we're still left with a good chunk of meat uh, on both of them now this is everything that I removed so all that sort of fat cap and any wee stringy sinews and things I tried to get out as much as possible so it's a fiddly job but take your time with it nice sharp knife and get them into shape so we'll go ahead and get these rubbed up with the Oak Ridge rub and uh, we'll get them onto the smoker Beef cheeks are on, uh, according to Phil's right up now, we have a couple of hours to wait until they get up to an, inter an internal temperature of around 160 Fahrenheit, so somewhere around 70, 71 degrees Celsius. Um, I've set up the ThermoQ Wi-Fi, uh, so that's keeping an eye on the pit temps and the internal temp of the actual beef cheeks. Once we get up close to it, I'll start probing them. It's only in one beef cheek, obviously, so once we get up close to that, then we'll start probing them with the thermopen just to check uh, what the temperatures are like in both cheeks. And then we'll look at getting them into a brazen liquid and covering them and finishing off the cook. So while we're waiting for two hours, I've got a little bit of a project I want to do. So you may know in the last video, I got these large pans. So I have three of them, the 10 and a half inch skillets. Uh, if you want to check them out, I'll leave links for them below. But um, I want a couple of these hung out in the shack so they're to hand every time we don't have to run into the house to get them. So uh, I think I want to put them around about here on the back wall, which means moving one of my signs. But So I think we'll go ahead and mount them up while we're waiting for the beef cheeks to hit temperature.
So that's the skillet that's mounted onto the wall. Um, glad to have them there to hand whenever I need them. It's a bit handier than running in and out of the house. So we're just over two and a half hours into the initial smoke on these beef cheeks and I've checked them and they are uh, up to temperature. They're both sitting at around that 70 degrees, uh, one of them slightly higher. So now's the time we're going to go ahead and get the brazen liquid made up and then we'll lift these off, get them into the liquid and cover them in foil and then they'll go into that second stage of the cook. So the beef cheeks are off, we did have a little bit of a stall in the middle of it, um, as it came out of it not too bad, the temps were pretty steady on the smoker so it managed to push it through. They are still quite soft, they haven't hardened up just yet, but I'm not sure I'd want to take a bite out of them, but we'll get them into the braising liquid, they've definitely taken on a decent smoke, and you can still see the colours of the rub coming through on them which is quite nice. So the brazen liquid we've gone for is quite traditional. Um, we've got 400 mils of beef stock, 250 mils of freshly brewed coffee. Uh, coffee and beef is quite a good combination together. Uh, we've also got maybe three or four tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, then three cloves of garlic all smashed up, just three in there, and then uh, a bunch of rosemary, which we've just torn up roughly, and three in as well. So try and make sure your brazen liquid's warm. Don't be doing it ice cold and then setting your uh, beef cheeks into it because you will shock them. So if we go ahead and just set the, the beef cheeks into the liquid. And go ahead and spoon some of that over the top of them. So you will get more fat rendering out of the, the beef cheeks and mixing with this liquid, which is what will continue to braise them. So all that moisture and the flavour from that braise will cook up into them anyway. The main aim is to get all them fats broke down so they're nice and soft at the end. So once you have them nicely coated, then the last thing to do is just add tin foil over the top of them and get them back onto the smoker again. So now the beef cheeks are on the braise, then all that's left to do is to maintain that temperature. So keep it between 110 and 120, somewhere in that range should be fine. Um, we're going to braise these then until they reach an internal temperature of 92 to 95, somewhere in that range. Um, at that point then, we're not going to lift them off, we're going to check them. And if they don't feel tender, don't feel like they can pull apart, we'll wrap them back up and put them in again. So we don't want to lift them off until we know they're ready and they feel ready. Um, that, I think that was a mistake Phil made in the, his first three attempts was taking them off whenever they hit a temperature and sometimes a cook can go slightly different and they just don't hit that temperature and be done. Sometimes they need to go a little bit further so that gives us an idea of when to check if they're ready but they might not be ready so we have to leave them on. So we've just hit an internal temperature of 95 so we're going to open them up, have a look at them, uh, give them a poke with the thermopen, um, see what the temperatures are reading in both of them. At the minute I've only got the probe in one. Um, we'll see how they feel. If I think they're tender enough to pull apart, we'll lift them off and rest them. If not, we'll leave them on for a little bit longer. So let's pull back the foil now and see how we're getting on. Still got a nice bark on them now, so give them a probe with the thermopen, see internals wise, we're sitting at around 96 or so, let's we'll see if we can get that in the camera. So they're at that higher range where we said we'd start checking. Um, they still feel a little bit tough around here, these sort of outer edges feel quite soft definitely around this area here you just need a little bit more time Let's see what this one feels like again I'm not sure I don't think they're done just yet and it's reading just over 95 in that one so I think we're going to wrap them up and put them back on and um, we'll give them another 15 20 minutes and check them again So 
it's been almost exactly an hour since the beef cheeks hit 95 and we lifted them off and checked them and they weren't quite ready yet. So they've been back on. Uh, I checked them about 30 minutes ago and they were getting there but they just still didn't feel that good. So we're going to check them again now. I think they should be pretty close if not ready. Um, so we'll get them lifted off again and we'll check them with the probe and we'll do the fork test that filled in his article. So unfortunately because of the hour we're starting to lose daylight so I hope you can still see this okay but um, if we stick the probe in there is very little resistance in them, both of them now. So I'm hoping we're pretty close. Let's try the fork test on them. So you can sort of see them shredding there a little bit. So I think they are going to pull okay. So we're not done yet, we need to let these rest a little bit. So I'm going to wrap them back up again, leave them sitting for maybe around 30 minutes or so, and then we'll lift one out and pull it and see what it's like. So we've been resting for just over half an hour. So let's pull one apart here and see how we've done. Oh, we're pulling not too bad. So they are tender. They can maybe have gone a little bit longer. You can still sort of see some of them connective tissues and stuff there, but they're definitely a lot better than the last ones I've done. So you can see the fibers are just pulling apart, which is what you want. Maybe not quite mash them with a spoon, but sure. They're definitely pulling apart quite nice, so. We'll pull the camera up now and we'll give them a, a taste test. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a taste. So, pick a nice bit here, plenty of bark on it. And the fats have definitely melted down in them really well. So it could have gone a little bit further. But definitely compared to last time. That black ops rub's really good. There's a really nice peppery kick to it. I can see why it's their brisket rub. For that traditional Texas flavour to it nearly, but mm. Those are good. They are like mini little mini briskets really, aren't they? Okay, so the cook didn't quite go to plan. Uh, as I'm sure you can tell, it is now uh, night time. I think it's only half eight at night. So the total cook, I think took around maybe seven and a half hours. So I would know for future to start it a little bit earlier and uh, have it done a little bit quicker. And just to give it that extra maybe half an hour just to uh, tender them down a little bit more. But other than that, compared to the first time out, definitely a massive success. So I'll leave a write up in the blog um, about the cook and what I've done about the braising liquid I used. Uh, I'll also leave a link over to Phil's article because uh, it's definitely worth a read. It came in, it was invaluable today. And I would say that's probably what I would attribute the big jump in success to because last time they were like bullets. <laughs> so uh, thanks Phil for putting the article out. I say it's really handy. Check it out down in the description. If you like the video, uh, please give it a thumbs up, or if you've had any success or failures cooking um, beef cheeks, then definitely leave a comment below and let us know how you've got on. Um, if you like the channel, please give it a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.